from montanasports.com. This is MTN Sports Extra. Welcome into MTN Sports Extra. I'm Ashley Washburn alongside Luke Shelton. It was a busy week for sports, and so for the next half hour, we'll take a look at some of the top stories making headlines, ranging from the tennis courts even to the cheerleading mats. That's right, but first we start on the gridiron. Just like the new year, a new football season brings new goals, and as the Bobcats reach the midpoint of spring ball, Tommy Malott has made his intentions known for this year as he makes his return to the field. This time last year not only looked, but felt a lot different for Tommy Malott. He was the new guy on campus, taking reps as a four-string quarterback, but in a matter of seven months became the leader Montana State needed, taking them to the biggest stage in the FCS. Didn't get a ton of reps last year going into the season, and so when I got in, you know, the coaching staff really took care of me and, and what uh, we ran, you know, during games. But with his role more clear this spring, as well as an ankle that's nearing full strength after injuring it in the title game, these next few weeks hold a different weight this time around. Tommy emerged in a lot of ways through December last year, but, uh, you know, um, he's intent on taking another step. I'm just really trying to improve my knowledge of the game, you know, defenses, our offense, protections. I've got a million things I have to improve on. And if the postseason was any indication, Tommy had no problem running the ball, averaging nearly 25 carries a game minus the FCS championship, which is why at the top of his list this spring is all about passing. We're trying to make you know spring ball more about the, the passing game as much as possible to just not him taking off and running. Week into it, I, I like where he's at. You know, his grasp of all that we're doing while it was good back in December, you know, he's taking that to another level. Of course, the elephant in the room is his new competition this spring, but Tommy was quick to reassure the addition of Wyoming transfer Sean Chambers has been nothing but beneficial for the Bobcats. We're both bouncing some stuff off of each other, and it's been great. You know, we've been emphasizing it the entire time so far. It's our quarterback group's got to got to improve. Um, you know, and we're going to push each other. Everyone's going to push each other. You know, Sean Austin, Jordan Reed, all those guys. They're getting reps, and that's the key to how we're doing things. That position, as much as any of them, you know, those guys need to learn by doing, and you can see some real progress in all of them this week. While captains haven't been selected yet for this upcoming season, Vegan has made it clear he wants Tommy to take more of a leadership role this season, not only on the field, but in the locker room as well. In Bozeman, Ashley Washburn, MTN Sports. And over in Missoula, the Montana Grizzlies have their own quarterback battle brewing. Here's MTN's Kyle Hansen with the latest from spring ball. The Montana Grizzlies are in the final week of spring football as their latest session winds to a close. One position group fans are watching closely with this team is the quarterback battle with last year's backup Chris Brown and San Diego State transfer Lucas Johnson as the headlining candidates for the job. Brown has been here before with the Grizz. The Bozeman High grad was in a quarterback battle with Cam Humphrey a year ago and now draws from that experience as he vies for the starting gig. It's nice having a guy like Lucas where it's like you can joke around, you can give each other a hard time and at the end of the day you're just making each other better. And Going through that with Cam was huge. It was like, I guess my first time doing that in college and now being able to do it this year, it's been good. While he didn't win the starting job to begin the year, Brown was called on midway through the season when Humphrey went down with injury. Understanding the offense for sure, understanding it better and better. Each time, you know, get out there and, and go against certain looks on defense. And I would also say just seeing all the different looks that our defense gives, we have a very challenging, very competitive defense and just seeing everything they give is helpful because you know there's, there's probably not much else you could see out there on any given Saturday. Johnson comes to UM after stops at Georgia Tech and San Diego State. Last year for the Aztecs, Johnson had his best year in college with nine starts, 1,400 yards passing and 12 touchdowns. And he led SDSU to a bowl win. I think I'm a dynamic quarterback. I can come in, I can run, I can throw. I, I think I'm a pretty good leader, and I think that's what my experience uh, comes to the table. I can uh, help these guys out with the stuff that I know, so I just come out here and do anything I can to help us win. Like Brown, Johnson has been here before with QB competition and knows that while he's competing with his teammates, it's about making everyone else better at the same time. You just have to have a mindset that you have to come out every day and bring your best game, because if not, other guys are having a good day, you might get in your head, but I think at the end of the day, everybody wants to see each other do well. Like everywhere I've been, I think the best teams I've been on, the QB room has been really tight, and whoever's playing, Everybody's helping him out. Reporting in Missoula, Kyle Hansen, MTN Sports. 
While there are lots of storylines to follow with both programs in the midst of spring ball, all eyes were on one former Bobcat earlier this week as Tori Anderson took the field for Montana State's Pro Day. But with nearly two dozen NFL teams in attendance, it was also an opportunity for 10 other Bobcats, plus a lineman from Montana Tech, to showcase their talents. The Montana State football team is coming off one of its most successful seasons in program history. The Bobcats drew plenty of attention in their run to the FCS title game, and on Monday a handful of players got a chance to showcase their skills to NFL scouts at MSU's Pro Day. Let's start off in the weight room before heading outside. And if you want to see what raw strength looks like, here's Chase Benson making 225 look like a paperweight. He's going to rip off a very respectable 30 reps for the best performance of the day. And here's another solid showing on the bench press. That's Montana Tech lineman Hunter Sparks going to work and representing the ore diggers. He'll finish with 28 reps, a big showing from a small college athlete. Growing up playing football, I always you always dream of playing in the NFL. Giving it a shot is a big goal. It's kind of a big deal for me getting able to even just come out here and participate in the pro day. And here's another eye-popping moment. This one in the vertical jump as Daniel Hardy elevates and hits a mark of 40 inches. You know, I came to send a message. You know, I belong in the NFL, and, and you know, I wanted to communicate that to you know, the scouts who are here to see me and everything, and you know, I've been putting in the work and it was time to let it show. Now let's venture out to a blustery Bobcat Stadium for some outside work. And of course, all eyes on Troy Anderson as the NFL draft approaches. The Dillon product ran a 4.42 in the 40-yard dash at the Combine, and here he is following that up with a 3.99 in the shuttle run. Anderson said he's received an overwhelming amount of support as he prepares for the next level. It's cool, I've had so many people kind of around the state of Montana. I mean, Dylan Bozeman, um, everywhere that's reached out and just kind of wishes me well. And I mean, I've kind of said it before, it's Montana's a big state, but it's one big small town kind of feel. And so to have all that support has been, has been a ton. I mean, to have everybody that I can rely on and reach out to, um, yeah, it's been, it's been great. In Bozeman, Luke Shelton, MTN Sports. And eight Montana Grizz football players also got the chance to showcase their skills in front of NFL scouts Tuesday morning. There were five NFL teams in attendance. Among those working out for UM was receiver Samuel Akem, offensive lineman Moses Mallory and Dylan Cook, kicker Kevin Macias, safety Gavin Robertson, corner Omar Hicks Onu, long snapper Matthew O'Donohue, and quarterback Cam Humphrey. Each player competed in a number of drills in front of scouts both indoors and outdoors in Washington Grizzly Stadium, even after Monday's snowstorm in Missoula. While current Grizz players and coaches were in attendance to support their former teammates, while their time at Montana is over, each player was excited to showcase what they could do in front of scouts in hope of continuing their pro football careers at the highest level. <laughs> Montana weather can be something else. That's pretty much it. Uh, I was pretty prepared for everything that was going to be thrown at us, but you know, weather is just so unpredictable. We kind of just have to go out and do what we can. I think it was really good. It was fun to get back out here and, and see my former teammates do their thing as well as me. It felt good to just get moving again in a football way. I felt really good. Definitely that season was very important. Um, winning the job, that was a big goal for me. And playing here definitely helped out but showing what I can do in front of the scouts and the coaches was a lot and whatever the opportunities there I want to take it. It would mean everything you know it's been like a quiet dream for me my whole life you know because my brother was the four star my brother was the guy who was recruited by all the schools close to home and stuff like that so it was one of my dreams but it was never something I'd be like man I'm going to NFL I'm going to NFL but you know it'd mean the world to me if I got that opportunity uh, I've, I've worked my butt off and I, I think I deserve a, a shot for sure. And with that, we have our Kyle Hansen joining us in Missoula for this week's edition of Roundtable to talk all about spring ball. Bobcats are in the midst of theirs right now, but the Grizz are wrapping up theirs. That quarterback battle is definitely a big topic of conversation that people are going to look at at that scrimmage. What have you seen so far at that position? Yeah, hey, Ashley. Well, right now, yeah, that quarterback battle is definitely at the forefront of all fans' minds, as typically it is with any college football team. You have Lucas Johnson, who joined the team from San Diego State earlier this year, pretty much battling Chris Brown, who was last year's backup for the Grizzlies. Brown was in a quarterback competition last year against Cam Humphrey, and Cam Humphrey ultimately won the job. So it's very interesting here because they're both different quarterbacks a little bit too. And, you know, it's the second straight year the Grizzlies are having a quarterback competition go on in spring ball that will then carry over to the fall. Johnson brings a lot of experience from his time both at San Diego State and Georgia Tech prior to that. He won a bowl game with the Aztecs this past year, 
Meanwhile, Brown has been here before. You know, last year he was just a redshirt freshman competing for a job, and I'm sure all of that experience plus the game experience he got last year went a long way. So it will be interesting to see how these two duke it out, both on Friday at the spring game as well as uh, come fall camp. You know, being a San Diego State grad, have to put a little plug in there. Obviously very familiar with Lucas Johnson, but also I actually watched him in high school because he's a San Diego kid himself. But when it's all said and done, I mean, who do you think gets list first on that depth chart if you just had to pick one today? The gut feeling is, you know, that Lucas Johnson is definitely the front runner right now, at least. You know, it's tough to say who is doing what because we haven't been able to watch any practices live, so I haven't gotten a chance to watch them both play. Obviously, Chris Brown had some struggles last year, but it was his first game experience. He showed signs of being a mobile quarterback and also showing signs of having a strong arm. For him, the biggest issue was just consistency and, you know, maybe just getting into his own head a little bit because he was such a young quarterback. But you have a guy like Johnson who has so much experience. I believe this is going to be his seventh year of college football. He's played at the FBS level. He's played in the ACC and the Mountain West. And you just have to think him coming in and the coaching staff kind of giving him glowing reviews so far that he's the front runner. But, you know, anything anything can happen right now. They're both good looking prospects. And just let me know as time goes on, we'll know for sure. It's insane to think that you could be in college for seven years playing football. But obviously you've got this scrimmage coming up. What are some other things that, you know, people are going to look out for other than just that quarterback battle? Yeah, there's a couple of interesting positions that they have to reload on. And the two that come to mind for me are defensive line and offensive line. The Grizz lost three starters on their O-line last year, including both of their tackles. And then on D-line last year, they lost both of their of their defensive ends. So they had some kids have to step up last year due to injury and got some valuable playing time. So now it's kind of a matter which of those kids are going to separate themselves and which of the, some of those kids are going to get over the hump and maybe make some bigger strides in that regard. It feels like some of the other position groups are kind of taken care of, like wide receiver. You know, they lost some talent there but they have some um, talented players coming back. Same with linebackers, same with safety. They, they're pretty loaded in as well. So, But I, I'm looking at those fronts as, lo- as well as quarterback as kind of like the main positions of who's going to stand out, you know, kind of towards the end of spring heading into the fall. Can't wait to see how that depth chart kind of shakes out. But, you know, next week, the Bobcats, you guys, the Grizz are finishing up their spring ball this week. Cats are still going. So next week, I'll join you to talk about kind of what's going on with Bobcat coverage. But it should be great. I look forward to talking to you next week. Thanks, Kyle. Yeah, thank you, Ashley. Appreciate it. Still to come, a longtime Great Falls basketball coach is getting inducted into the National Coaches Hall of Fame. Find out who after the break. Welcome back to MTN Sports Extra, powered by MontanaSports.com. Welcome back to Sports Extra. A legendary Montana basketball coach whose winning ways span the state is being celebrated with a spot in the National Coaches Hall of Fame. MTN's Dylan Foreman talked to him about the honor. As an assistant or a head coach, Mike McLean has won. Whether it was when he was the head boys basketball coach here at CMR or assisting the wrestler softball team, McLean amassed 13 state titles in his 32 years of high school coaching. And with it, will be inducted into the National Coaches Hall of Fame come June. It was a little bit of a surprise because there's lots of lots of good coaches out there that could be the same place I am. I just happen to be lucky. So. Lucky? Maybe. But there's no doubt that McLean is one of Montana's greatest coaches. And that's not just by the numbers. Longtime friend and current coaching colleague head coach Steve Keller of the University of Providence men's basketball team sees McLean as one of the greats. I don't know if he's had a losing season, to be honest with you. So definitely, you know, in the Mount Rushmore of coaches in Montana, Mike McLean would be right there. However, Coach McLean's numbers speak volumes. Six state basketball championships from 1991 to 2004 as head coach of Chester and CMR, seven state titles as an assistant softball coach at CMR, and to round it out, undefeated in state championship games in any sport. And for Coach, they're all special. Something that was just special. Those kids that I had, had, had they were tough-minded kids and tough Kids that came from good families, and no, I can't say there's any special. They're all special, and I mean, even even the teams that didn't win were special. Winning is great, but the fulfillment comes from just knowing the incredible players and staff he had over his 32-year career. You have to have good players and good coaching staffs and stuff like that in order to, to win state championships. And connection is probably what is most fulfilling for a coach or for you know whatever you do in your world in your life. Probably the connection you have with your coworkers or the people that were with you. That's probably the most fulfilling thing of all. The Hall of Fame induction takes place June 21st in Des Moines, Iowa and Great Falls. I'm Dylan Foreman, MTN Sports.
As the saying goes, when life gives you lemons, make lemonade. It's easier said than done, but as MTN's Alexa Bell Castro explains, that's exactly what Columbia Falls tennis program had to do when their chances of a season almost went sour. After a promising season for the Columbia Falls tennis team, you would think that the biggest question going into this season is, what players are they going to lose? Actually, that would have been much easier. The biggest loss the Wildcats had to navigate, losing their tennis court. Uh, courts actually were torn out last fall and one of my players called me and she was like, oh my gosh, the old courts are gone and the new courts aren't finished. And I had a moment of panic and I was just like, okay. But after panic came reinvention. Coach Michelle Colliander understood the significance of playing through this season, both on and off the courts, having once been a Wildcat tennis state champion herself. So Coach Colliander and her doubles partner in life got to work and my husband came too because he's you know a master of everything and he had some log posts in the back of his truck and he was like let me just try this and see if it works and it did um, and so we actually went home and got more material and came back and then just put these courts together the rest of the night and then found some nets and we were practicing the next day the wildcats are looking to build off a promising season after Cody Schweikert and Cade Morgan made it to state as Columbia Falls number one doubles team, they hope to ride that momentum along with their coach's perseverance. Her energy about this was insane, so we had to match it, and that's why we're out here every day working with her, and she's feeding balls every day to us, so she's just getting it done for us. We know everyone we're going to play now. We know we got what it takes to win, and last year we were just trying to get better this year we're really trying to make a run for it go as far as we can so. reporting in columbia falls alexa bel castro mtn sports coming up when sports extra returns how columbia falls tennis turned a sour situation into a promising spring season follow montana sports on facebook and join the conversation with fans across the state welcome back to mtn sports extra Powered by MontanaSports.com. The state of Montana is known for producing some great athletes ranging from the wrestling mat to the football field. But you can also now add cheerleading to the mix. MTN's Alec Boffinger explains why. This local gym has put Billings on the global cheer map. Team Reign of Billings All-Star Cheer placed second at MCDA Nationals in Ogden, Utah in mid-March and earned a bid at Worlds in late April in Orlando. Like excited, but also like kind of nervous at the same time because we weren't, like we were surprised that we were actually able to go. Once everyone found out, they're all just as excited. Our youngest one, Hadley, she was the most excited out of all of us. <laughs> she was freaking out. Team Rain will have plenty on the agenda while down in Orlando. The competition is inside Universal Studios, and the girls are one of the first teams to do their routine. That leaves the entire day to enjoy the attractions. And so depending on how they do the first day, depends if they go back for day two or not. And then they would compete from that point forward. If not, then they would probably spend a little bit of time in the parks, hopefully. <laughs> It won't be cheap for Team Rain to travel, however. They're hoping various fundraising efforts can help offset the rising costs, which amount to just over $3,000 per traveler for the trip. It's a large cost, especially with uh, all the inflation stuff going on. I don't think anybody expected the gas to be where it's at right now. So plane tickets are more, lodgings more, tickets for the parks. Everything seems to be quite a bit more than it was at this time last year. Team Rain will fly down to Orlando on April 20th and compete the following two days. In Billings, Alec Boffinger, MTN Sports. Fly fishing is a major sport for Montanans and with temperatures finally warming up, many people are starting to break out their rods. MTN's Kennedy Broadwell spoke with a Helena outfitter to get the lowdown on fly fishing the Missouri River this spring. If this story doesn't really end, I don't know what will. I'm just here waiting in the Missouri River to talk to some local anglers about what you can expect while fishing the Missouri this spring. Owner operator of Montana Dream Fishing Outfitters, Russell Doborinsky, explains what conditions are like this spring. Spring specifically, 
Uh, we tend to fish a lot of um, midges. There's a lot of midges that are starting to hatch. It's pretty much the, the one predominant bug in the water right now. Um, but you'll, you'll catch fish on sow bugs, scuds, hot beads, that kind of thing. And you're usually nymph fishing fairly deep uh, in, in slower moving water. That's where you're gonna find most of the fish. He also shares what makes fishing the Missouri so special. The Missouri River this time of the year, uh, you're gonna have water to fish just about anywhere. And um, you know, because, because it's regulated uh, and there's, there's lots of food in the water, um, fish are really big and they're concentrated in, in certain areas. So if you find a couple fish, you can stick to those areas in that kind of slow moving water and recycle those spots so that you can fish them over and over again. Angler Jacqueline Holbrook splits her time fly fishing in Montana and Alaska and says she's seen the sport grow in popularity with women. I've definitely noticed a shift. Um, quite a few of my friends fish now. I have friends that are female guides. So if you're just learning to fly fish, there's opportunities to go out with a female guide, a female casting instructor. Holbrook is also well versed on how anglers can fish sustainably and ethically. I would say one of the most important things that people can do when they're fly fishing to be an ethical fisherman is how they handle the fish. And there's a movement called Keep It Wet where it's aimed at um, helping people keep the fish in the water. And if you do want to take a picture of it, there are steps that you can go through. One of them being, you know, wet your hands before you touch the fish, um, touching the fish gently, taking pictures where the fish isn't going to fall on the boat, isn't going to fall on land, is going to go in the water. For more sustainable fishing tips and tricks, you can visit keepfishwet.org. In Helena, Kennedy Broadwell, MTN Sports. She's currently the fastest girl in Montana, but is on the brink of another record. That would make her the fastest girl in the history of the state. We'll introduce you to Jaden Wolf after the break. There's more from MTN Sports anytime at montanasports.com.